krockfootball.com.au and time for another coaches zoom interview although easing of restrictions is starting to take place unfortunately local media actually can't make their way to local football grounds to cover training uh, that's the edict from our friends at afl barn and we're happy to adhere to that if it means we can get local football and netball underway in season 2020 lucky enough to be joined by a man from one club who has got training underway he's coached the longest pre-season of his life trying to Kate, take his team to their first game under under in his charge. And Pete Davies has been good enough to join us. Pete, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, what's the two and a half months been like for you since the Grubbers last walked off the track at Shell Road? Yeah, geez, it's oh, same for everyone. Eh? It's um, it's, it's been probably felt like about six months and two and a half months. But um, yeah, look, I mean, from a personal uh, perspective, not not a lot has changed. I work remotely, so that that's all good. But from a footy perspective, geez, we um. We had all this momentum going. We'll play a practice match, ready to go, and then suddenly, yeah, um, can't even catch up with anyone. So it's been been a real challenge on a, on a number of different fronts. But hmm. yeah, hopefully that the end is uh, is near for that one. A little sad twist to your practice match was that I believe you played the club coached by Dean Laidley. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Well, it wasn't a practice match. It was a match simulation. Yep. Um, so. We, um, we, we had a few drills against them and, and then about 15 minutes of competitive match style stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, I got to meet Dean and, and, uh, and his crew. Um, so yeah, pretty sad what, what's happened after that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, unfortunately because the fact that there's been no footy, it unfortunately has consumed uh, much of the media uh, for a period of time there. Um, we hope Dean's getting the help that he requires. But talk to us about going back to training last night, Pete. And did, were you the ones that got what, the one that got to put the key in the lock and open the door, or was the press already down there? Yeah, no, look, we, um, we were pretty organised and well, very organised in what we're doing. Um, so, yeah, Pete Smith was down there. We had um, Dean McNeil, who's our COVID officer there. We had all the antiseptic out. We had the the ball towels and the ball wash and and everything ready to go. So it was it was a really it was an interesting night. It was um one of the more bizarre training sessions I've ever been part of. Just a, a funny feel around it, but um but just great to catch up with everyone. And and once the footy starts spinning around and the and the banter picks up again and guys get to see each other, that that's what it was all about. It wasn't about you know skills or fitness or anything like that. It's just about getting guys back together again. Yep. You come in as coach of a, a football club and you're building relationships. Has the last two and a half months made it hard to, to continue to build those relationships or have you been able to do that via social media as we are through Zoom and, and the like? Yeah, look, it's been really difficult. And actually, um, I, I spoke to a few people this morning about that. And, um, you know, we, we had a great camp and we, um, we certainly sort of shared a lot of information about myself and about the players in front of each other. And, and really, um, you know, sort of set the tone for what the next period of time will look like. Um, and just, yeah, I think the last couple of months, you know, we, we, we had regular Zoom meetings at the start and, um, and they kind of, I think just that you can see the motivation of the guys start to drop off a little bit. And, you know, the first night we had um, you know, 40 people tuning in and you see the numbers start to, start to dwindle down and, and, and you do what you can by text message and, and phone and social media, but it, there's nothing like sort of sitting down having a coffee with someone or yep. putting your arm around them when you're at training and, and having a chat and asking how they're going and, and what the last week has looked like. So it has been a real challenge. So is that one of the focuses for you now is to, to build, like, re, oh, not rebuild, but start building on what the foundation you already had with those relationships in this period, especially when we don't know whether we're playing again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the sooner we can get back and, you know, and we're starting to do that now. That was probably the key thing for me with going to the club and saying, look, I want to get going as soon as we can. As soon as restrictions ease and we can do these groups of 10, I want to get us going because I think it's really important for myself, but also for the players to to really, um, yeah, you know, whether we play this year or not, we can start next year from now. And that's a relationship thing. It's not, you know, anything else. Yep. Spoke with Leopold, their coach, Jace Tom, and uh, he had the uh, the frisbees out and the, the soccer balls and the tennis rackets just doing something a little little bit different. Did you guys sort of cross train a little bit as well? No, look, we just um, we just said it was going to be a, a, a really basic skill tonight. There'd be no fitness. It was just um, some basic kicking. We had kicking at one end and, and some goal kicking drills at the other, which generally generates a bit of excitement when guys can <laughs> show off to their mates. So, yeah, look, um, and we'll... You know, I had a chat to one of the assistant coaches today around what we can do tomorrow night and, and a focus for that. And 
and what we'll do next week when we get hopefully get bigger numbers along as well. You said in the preseason one of your advantages was Shell Road and how big Ray Menzies oval is and how you can use it to your advantage. I suspect blokes trying to cover half of Shell Road Oval. There's going to be some fit boys at the end of this little preseason. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was fine last night because we'd only sit inside 50 of that jam. But, um, but yeah, it's funny. If anyone had a pop down and, and sort of had their eye on us thinking we might be doing something wrong, you would have seen 20 blokes a kilometre apart on that on that ground. So, yeah, it's certainly no chance of, uh, of getting too close. The talk is that we might be able to go to 20 next week. Is that your understanding? You can train yeah, well, that, that's what I'm working towards, yeah. Yeah, I think Monday night we can go to, so ready for Tuesday, yeah. And then obviously building up and hopefully we see contact training. How do you condition players for contact training, knowing that it, by the time you might get to that, it could be mid-June, late June, three months without feeling bodies uh, we're hearing of injuries at AFL level already. Jager O'Meara, Buddy Franklin uh, have got hurt from, from various... Uh, one was contact, one was not. But how do you start, I suppose, building that condition up? Do you, have you got the conditioning staff working on that pretty closely? Yeah, look, we've been, we're blessed with our, um, our well-being and fitness coach. So we've got Dean Casamento um, looking after the guys. And he's had them on a, on a really strict program for the last two and a half months. And, uh, and we probably got to about three or four weeks ago and um, and I sort of had a chat to a couple of guys. Said, "Look, do we start winding this down? Because we just don't want to mentally tax the guys if there if there's nothing in sight." And then we got the news that you know that, that we may get a season going. So Dean's been great in having the guys doing a really hybrid training program. So they're they're doing some strength stuff. They're doing their fitness stuff. You can't help the incidental knocks that you're going to get at training, but but we think we've done everything that we can to um to make sure that the guys will be in, in half decent shape if we do get some games. Yep. So how many on the track, Pete? Last night we had 40. Yep. Yeah, so we, we threw it open to 40 people and it was basically first in best dressed and, and we had a number of guys that were hoping to train and just couldn't train. So um, we'll have, I think we've got about eight new guys coming through in the group tomorrow night. So we'll have 48 over two nights, which is, which is good. Yeah. Anybody come back in, you know, you've got a young group. Anybody put a bit of size on over that couple of months or anybody come back that you caught your eye last night? Yeah, so look, too, too look, Harry Walker has been phenomenal and he's been logging his runs and he's been doing half marathons each week. So um, at, at some good clips. So he's one that's come back in, in tip top shape. Um, Kobe and Ann was one that surprised me um, and he's one that, uh, that Dean's been working with from a, 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 a um, a strength perspective and he came back looking a bit bigger. So I don't know if that's fish and chips on the couch and, and a bit of, bit of weight lifting, but, um, but he, aerobically he was, he was good last night too. So. And obviously one of the graduates out of that Colts team that won the uh, division two flag last year, you've yeah. spoken about it at length with, with numerous media that that's where you want to see your improvement this year. If you get, uh, get on the track. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we picked our side for round one and there were 12 under nine ends in there. So yeah, that's certainly the, the uh, direction we're taking. Uh, personally, how have you found, I suppose, trying to connect in, in these ways? Have you found, you know, you've been in coaching for a while, your resume is fantastic, but has this changed your approach to coaching and how you might do it going forward in, you know, even once we're beyond what the, the restrictions are? Yeah, I, I think probably pre-Christmas, um, we can maybe look at easing off a little bit. We went really hard before Christmas, just for the month of December. Well, we started late, but we went pretty hard early. Um, we can probably, I think, um, start later again and maybe just have a few runs before Christmas, but do a lot of this stuff and, um, and just get close to the guys. We can do a lot of um, you know, PowerPoints around gameplay and, yep. and setups with the guys that, you know, you don't want to hold players back at quarter to eight or eight o'clock after training to go through that sort of stuff. So, yeah, th there has been a lot of stuff that has been really valuable that we've learned from it. Yeah, do you see it's a bit of a chance for local football to reset a little bit? And, and I suspect two players are, are finding out that they've got families at home and yeah. wives and girlfriends and kids that you know miss them in in winter. And we, we're finding out that well, how can we do this a bit more streamlined that we can find a good balance between work, you know, family and and, and sport? Absolutely, and, and work's a big one. I think you know the way that um, you know companies have found that they can still operate remotely um that's only going to help local sport because you're going to get more time and more flexibility to go and do that sort of stuff um i think from a from a club i think clubs can reset 
And that's, we had a meeting on, on Saturday just around that, around looking forward to next year and what we can do for the rest of the season. So it's a real, as much as it's been a, a, a bit of a shooter, not being able to, to get out and do anything, um, it does actually give you a chance to take stock and, and really plan rather than just sort of go through the motions year after year. Yeah. You, if we got started, we'd have a nine round season. You'd love to play finals. But for Ocean Grove, in, where you're at in your development, is that potentially nine practice matches? And I know they're worth four points, but do you, yeah. would you use it and go, all right, let's have a look at what we look like round one, 2021? Yeah, look, this year was all was always going to be getting games into the kids and that that won't change. Um, you know, we, we actually, you know, we, we had a chat about it initially and said, look, nine games wouldn't be the worst result for us because being smaller bodies, you're not going to have that, that length of season where they're going to get beaten up and, yep. and maybe drop off towards the end. So nine games if we're fit, you never know what, what can happen. And um, personally, I, I think having nine rounds and, and four weeks of finals would be a bit of a bit of a joke. Um, I think you could probably just reward three teams and have two weeks of finals um, okay. at, at the end. But yeah, and that, and that gives you another couple of weeks to start the season later as well. So would you suggest then if you had a top three that if you win, if you finish on top, you're straight into the grand final right, and right. Yep. second and third play each other? Yeah, yeah. The only, I guess the only thing would be nine games, it's probably going to come down to percentage with those top few teams. So it might make it a bit more exciting with scoring and, and uh, trying to hold sides defensively. But yeah, I think um, this, it gives you every opportunity to, to start as late as you can. Um, yep. which I think you know, that's the main thing. Before I let you go, one last thing I will ask you, Pete, is do you expect we'll play football this year or where do you sit on the on the decision? Um, I probably change every few days. <laughs> and I know you and I have had, had some some chats about it. And, um, you know, I was pretty bullish at the start. And then, like everybody, I probably for about a month, I dropped off completely and thought there's no, there's no chance. Um, the news we got last week around Cricket Victoria pushing their season back made me think, oh, hang on, there's the... the the AFL Vic and Cricket Victoria are obviously talking this through and, and, and doing everything they can to get footy and cricket going. Um, and you would suspect the state government's probably involved somewhere there as well, that, you know, yeah. that, that they would probably go to them and say, we don't want to give people false hope, but here's the, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And look, that, you, you make a great point. And that, the whole false, false hope thing is something that we just can't wait until the 9th of June to to find out about because I think that's doing everyone's hands in at the moment is, is that um, not knowing what's going to happen. But yeah, look right now, look, I'm probably thinking there will be some footy played and whether that's senior footy or junior footy or, or whatever, I think there will be something. Yep. Um, I would love to say there'd be senior footy, but I'm probably a, a 20, 80, 20%, yeah, 80% now at the moment. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed that 20% comes to reality, Pete, because uh, I think we're all looking forward to it. And I think we're all looking forward to seeing Ocean Grove in action. Um, I know you've been uh, very bullish about what your young crew might be able to do in, in 2020, and uh, it'd be great to be able to see them, even if it is only for nine games, and maybe get a glimpse of what the future's like down at uh, down at Shell Road. Hey, really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, and uh, look you. forward to hopefully talking a little bit more footy with you uh, and getting a, a resolution around games being started sometime yeah. in July. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it, mate.